chamber rabbit, young puck. I'll straight you out yet. Greetings, young whippersnappers. Taking a look at one of the most beloved old timers of all of Transformers. Old timer? It's a term of endearment. 50 is the new 40 after all, right? Or in your case, 50 million is the new 40 million. Are you from the IRS? Uh, no, I'm from the 80s. Did Brandy the bookie send you? No, Anthony Ruiz did, for his Patreon special missions request. So what else is new? Well, not you, that's for sure. Ah, you're just jealous. Anthony, like myself, is a big fan of the old Autobot warrior, and particularly a fan of Cup's original voice actor. I figure with women, if at first you don't succeed, fail, fail, and fail again. Not sure how many other fans of the old bot are out there, though. You think the folks are up for a spotlight on you, Cup? Watch, I'll have him eating out of my hand. Okay. Bah, we've grown, ah, we've penny bar. How many of you just said, Ba weep grana, weep ninny bong? See, the universal greeting works every time. It certainly does. He made his debut in the 1986 animated movie, and his grizzled, gravelly, yet still charming voice was provided by acting legend Lionel Stander. I had no idea who Lionel Stander was in 1986, much like most of the all-star cast in 86, actually. And to this day, I still don't know much about him. So I wanted to just take a minute to fill you in on Cup's first voice. He was born in 1908 in the Bronx. Not much is known about his life as a kid. I was never a kid. Oh, that's why. And he apparently appeared in a silent film, 1926's Men of Steel, when he was a teenager. He appeared in dozens of films over seven decades, including the original version of A Star is Born in 1937 as Matt Libby. 20,000 Santa Monica school children spelling out the word love. Still with his trademark gravelly voice even in his late 20s. But his best remembered role for many, other than Cup, is Max on the TV series Heart to Heart with Robert Wagner and Stephanie Powers, which ran from 1979 to 1984. By the way, my name is Max. I take care of both of them, which ain't easy. He won a Golden Globe for best performance by an actor in a supporting role in a series, miniseries, or motion picture made for television in 1983. And the winner is Lionel Stander. I'd like to pay tribute to the creative talents. Cup's first toy incarnation was also released in 1986. And this is my original one. A little to the left, a little bit more. Ugh, happy now? As you can see, he's been up and down the road quite a few times. Must have been a well-traveled road. When it comes to Transformers, if I had my choice between an old beat-up one and a brand new shiny reissue, for display purposes, I'd usually prefer the new-looking one. Cup's an exception, though, since the whole idea behind the character is that he's the antithesis of all of his surrounding Autobots. He's not new, shiny, mint condition. I actually love every scratch, chip, dent, scuff, loose limb, worn-out sticker, and bit of dust on him. Yep, I remember the dust was so thick for Beta 4. Let's hold off on the war stories for now, old timer. Okay, okay. Okay, let's take a look at Cup's back of the box bio, courtesy of Botch the Crab. Allegiance, Autobot. Function, Warrior. The past is the greatest teacher. Cup is an old veteran war horse with a thousand tall tales from his 10,000 adventures. He has a motto or word of advice for any situation, and he's as brave and loyal as they come. In robot mode, he carries an old-style musket laser that shoots short bursts of metal corrosive hydrochloric acid. Range, 5 miles. Speed, 100 miles per hour. Cup sees himself as a seasoned campaigner with more knowledge and experience to share. Other Autobots aren't always receptive to his advice. Hey, Cup, don't you think we have better things to do now than tell old stories? Sometimes the bio from a G.I. Joe file card or Transformers tech spec card gets lost in translation to animation. But I'd say Cup's bio is pretty much 100% true to his portrayal in both the movie as well as Season 3 and Season 4 of the Sunbow series. <laughs> One thing the bio doesn't mention, though, is all the languages Cup speaks. Three in total. English. Spanish. Cerveza. That's as far as my Spanish goes. Beer and how much is it? And of course, TV. I talk some TV. And now the news. Don't touch that dial. The toy didn't include Petro Rabbits. I'll give you Petro Rabbits. Had to sneak that in there. 
but it did include the aforementioned musket laser, useful for fending off Decepticons and Sharkticons. <laughs> still isn't as useful as a new set of golf clubs. Let's talk articulation. Not as much as in the movie. About the same as year one or year two Autobot cars though. Wrist swivel, elbow bend, but the wrong way. Bending in instead of up and down. And a full 360 on his shoulder. The head goes up and down a tiny bit, allowing him to nod, which is ironic for Cup who's more of a head shaker. Well, if there's nothing else, I gotta go do my knee bends. Guess you haven't been doing them frequently enough because there's none to speak of here. This cup was actually disassembled and reassembled a few times back in the day to recreate him being torn to pieces and fixed by Hot Rod on Quintessa in the movie. Fix me! Sure, cup. Right, right away. away. I think I got most of him back together. Of all the second glitch diode blowing dim wittery, you left a piece out! Ah, you're right. Looks like I lost an original screw, and used any one that I could find to bolt the torso back on. I think it adds to his charm. Yeah, but I don't. Cup, Blur, and Hot Rod were classified as Autobot cars, but they were upscaled from their 84 and 85 counterparts. The interesting thing about Cup is, unlike Hot Rod and Blur, he's got a giant piece of die-cast metal on him. Just as much as any 84 or 85 Autobot car, if not more. So you'd think the upsizing of the cars was a result of the decrease in metal used. But not in Cup's case. The die cast is a perfect fit for the character, making him fit right in with the old guard, despite being a new movie character. Okay, anything else to show off? Yeah, the truck. Right, let's transform him into truck mode. I can't transform. That's because you've got an energy shackle on you. Hi mom, hi dad. Remember this guy? Remember? 1986? Pepperidge Farms remembers. So I've transformed this guy so many times in my life, I feel like I can do it with my eyes closed, which is what I'm going to try right now. Actually, I'm going to try a literal blind transformation. Alright, so first thing is you collapse the feet in, and then you're going to pull the hips out. It's all in the hips, you know. Collapse the cab to hide the head, feel the hip moving out like that. You want to push the cab into the body there. Mine catches a bit because of that mismatched bolt screw that I've put in there. You uh, put the back in like that. And then the trickiest part, whether you're watching or not, is to feed the arms. You got to bend the elbow and feed the arms into the cab. And I feel, I feel a fist is getting caught in there. You gotta spin the wheels out and feed them in there. And voila, truck mode. Well, what do you think? It's a Cybertronian truck. Not really sure what it's supposed to look like, just like all Cybertronian alt modes. Does it remind you of anything? Nope. Never seen anything like this before. I've heard it called a futuristic truck, but that doesn't make much sense for a grizzled old character. I mean, he should have been an old F series Ford pickup truck if that's what they were going for. Range on this truck? Probably two miles. Two miles? Who said anything about two miles? I'm up to two blocks. Unfortunately, with the 86 version, there's nowhere to put his weapon. Any ideas, Cup? You really want me to tell you where to put it? Uh, keep it family friendly, pal. In the hall closet, way in the back. That's pretty much your only option. Unlike Hot Rod, who had a hole in his engine where you could plug one of his weapons into, Cup sort of has the back of the truck, which doesn't have a gate to hold anything in it. Seems like this lip should have been facing the other way. Hasbro often re-released toys the following year in the same box with the same accessories, but in Cup's case, along with Hot Rod and Blur, they were re-released in 87 as Target Masters. Show him, Cup! Recoil. This time, the back of Cup's truck had a hole which could hold his target master, Recoil, in vehicle mode. I think he looks better without a weapon mounted, though. Maybe you're right, I won't wear it. See what I mean about a brand new minty reissue cup? A fresh coat of paint just doesn't work on this guy. What do you know about it, lad? I just got this feeling. 
In season three and four of the Sunbow series, the role was taken over by this kid, John Stevenson. Nah, my name's Teaspoon, and I'm Cybertron's chief dishwasher. Who eased right in thanks to his history of portraying older and more ornery characters in animation, like Mr. Slate on the Flintstones. Flintstone, you're fired! General Flag on G.I. Joe. Affirmative, Duke. You're way ahead of me, as usual. And Alpha Trion on Transformers. A second golden age of Cybertron is almost at hand! Hey, he was Professor X on the X-Men series, too. Cool. And that's 86 Cup. Not the end I'd wish for, that. Ah, come on, we covered plenty of stuff today. I mean, when was the last time you had this much attention? Not lately. Oh, that's sad. Well, you must have had a lot of attention when the movie first came out, right? I'm trying to remember. There were an awful lot of casualties that day. <laughs> that line always cracks me up. Thanks, Anthony, for the request, and thank you to the amazing folks who have joined the Patreon tribe, who bring all Patreon power. And with it, all hope. And to all the channel members for hitting the join button. Oh, that too. Thank you for your support as well. Feel free to leave an old time of thought in the comment spot. Don't act hostile. Yes, this old coot has seen enough battles. This reminds me of the battle on Alpha 9. The Petra Rabbits. Oh, with here we go. And to join the tribe, hit subscribe. Till all are old and fun. What? <whistles>